Imagine a system of seven Earth-sized planets orbiting a star that is much smaller and cooler than our Sun. A system where some of the planets may have liquid water and even life on their surfaces. This system is only 40 light-years away from us, making it one of the closest and most intriguing exoplanetary systems ever discovered. This is the TRAPPIST-1 system, named after the telescope that first detected it in 2016. But what if we could take a closer look at these planets and their atmospheres? What if we could use a powerful and advanced telescope to observe them in the infrared spectrum, which could reveal more details about their temperature, composition, and chemistry? This is exactly what a new study did, using the James Webb Space Telescope to observe the exoplanet TRAPPIST-1b, which is the closest planet to its star in the system. The study aimed to answer a simple but important question. Does TRAPPIST-1b have an atmosphere? In this video, we will explore the findings and implications of this study and how it contributes to our understanding of exoplanets around low-mass stars. We will also discuss some of the challenges and limitations of observing these distant worlds and how future observations could overcome them. So stay tuned and let's get started. One of the main goals of the JWST is to study exoplanets, which are planets outside our solar system. These planets are very hard to detect and observe because they are very faint and far away, and because they are usually outshone by their host stars. To overcome this problem, astronomers use different techniques to isolate the light from the planets, such as transit spectroscopy. Transit spectroscopy is a method that measures the changes in the star's light as a planet passes in front of it, or transits. During a transit, some of the star's light is blocked by the planet, while some of it passes through the planet's atmosphere, if it has one. By comparing the spectrum of the star's light before, during, and after a transit, astronomers can infer what elements and molecules are present in the planet's atmosphere and how thick or thin it is. James Webb is ideal for performing transit spectroscopy because it can observe exoplanets in the infrared spectrum which is sensitive to many atmospheric features that are not visible at other wavelengths. For example, infrared light can detect water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, ozone, and other gases that are important for life. Infrared light can also measure the temperature and pressure of the atmosphere and how they vary with altitude. The new study used Webb to observe TRAPPIST-1b in transit spectroscopy mode using two instruments, NIRSPEC and MIRI. NIRSPEC stands for Near Infrared Spectrograph, which covers wavelengths from 0.6 to 5 microns. MIRI stands for Mid Infrared Instrument, which covers wavelengths from 5 to 28 microns. Together, these instruments provide a wide range of infrared coverage that can capture many atmospheric signatures. The study observed four transits of TRAPPIST 1b with NIRSPEC and two transits with MIRI, collecting more than 20 hours of data. Then they processed and analyzed the data to extract the spectrum of TRAPPIST-1b's atmosphere. The main findings and results of the new study were surprising and disappointing at the same time. They found that TRAPPIST-1b does not have a detectable atmosphere. The spectrum of TRAPPIST-1b was flat and featureless across all wavelengths observed by NIRSPEC and MIRI. This means that there was no evidence of any gases or molecules in its atmosphere that could absorb or emit infrared light. This result contradicts previous studies that suggested that some of the other planets in the TRAPPIST-1 system, such as TRAPPIST-1d, e, and f, may have atmospheres that could support life. These studies used data from other telescopes, such as the Hubble Space Telescope and the Spitzer Space Telescope, which observed the planets at different wavelengths and with lower resolution and sensitivity than the James Webb. Previous studies detected some hints of atmospheric features, such as water vapor and methane, but they were also plagued by large uncertainties and noise. However, the new study also found that the star's activity dominates the observations of TRAPPIST-1b. The star itself is a very low-mass and cool star, also known as an M-dwarf or a red dwarf. These stars are very common in the galaxy, but they are also very active and variable. They also have flares, spots, and cycles that can affect their brightness and spectrum. The study detected several flares and spots on TRAPPIST-1 during the observations of TRAPPIST-1b, which created noise and variability in the data. 
so they had to correct for these effects to isolate the signal from the planet. They concluded that TRAPPIST-1b does not have an atmosphere because it is too close to its star and receives too much radiation from it. The star's radiation could have stripped away any primordial atmosphere that the planet may have had when it formed or prevented it from forming one in the first place. The study estimated that TRAPPIST-1b receives about 400 times more ultraviolet radiation than Earth does from the Sun, which is enough to erode any atmosphere within a few million years. This implies that TRAPPIST-1b is likely a rocky and barren world, unlike its potentially habitable siblings. They also calculated that TRAPPIST-1b has a surface temperature of about 400 degrees Celsius, which is too hot for liquid water or life to exist. The implications and limitations of the new study are both significant and challenging for our understanding of exoplanets around low-mass stars. It shows that not all planets in the TRAPPIST-1 system are alike and that their atmospheres depend on their distance from their stars. It also shows that low-mass stars can have a strong influence on the observations of their planets and that their activity can create noise and variability in the data. These findings are also important for understanding the diversity and evolution of exoplanets around low-mass stars, which are very common in the galaxy. They also demonstrate the potential and promise of using Webb to explore these distant worlds and answer fundamental questions about life in the universe. However, the study also faces some challenges and uncertainties that affect its conclusions. For one thing, they only observed one planet in the system, TRAPPIST-1b, which may not be representative of the other planets. For another thing, they only observed a limited range of wavelengths with NERSPEC and MIRI, which may not capture all possible atmospheric features. For example, some gases or molecules may have stronger signatures at other wavelengths, such as visible or ultraviolet light. Moreover, the study had to deal with a lot of noise and variability from the star's activity, which may have masked or distorted some signals from the planet. Therefore, they suggest that future observations of the TRAPPIST-1 system should account for these factors and use multiple wavelengths and instruments to reduce the uncertainties. For instance, James Webb has another instrument called NIRIS, which stands for Near Infrared Imager and Slitless Spectrograph, that can observe exoplanets in visible and near-infrared light using a technique called transit photometry. Transit photometry is similar to transit spectroscopy. But instead of measuring the spectrum of the star's light, it measures its brightness as a function of time. By comparing the brightness variations during a transit with those outside a transit, astronomers can infer the size and shape of the planet's orbit, as well as its albedo or reflectivity. So by combining NIRIS with NIRSPEC and MIRI, astronomers can obtain a more complete picture of TRAPPIST-1b's atmosphere and surface properties. They can also observe other planets in the system with different instruments and wavelengths to compare and contrast their atmospheres. We have reached the end of this video, where we have explored the mystery of TRAPPIST-1b. We have learned how a new study used the James Webb to observe this planet in the infrared spectrum and how it found no evidence of any gases or molecules in its atmosphere. We have also learned how this finding contrasts with previous studies that suggested that some of the other planets in the TRAPPIST-1 system may have atmospheres that could support life. We have seen how the star's activity affects the observations of TRAPPIST-1b and how it creates noise and variability in the data. We have discussed the implications and limitations of this study and how future observations could improve our knowledge of exoplanets around low-mass stars. We hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. If you did, please give this video a like share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And don't forget to leave a comment below with your thoughts and questions about this topic. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.